you know, I, John Milius, uh, the writer of Apocalypse Now, and uh, I tell this story probably frequently because it's such a fucking good story. Um, John Milius, uh, he's a friend of mine. Um, uh, I've worked with him uh, before and um, collaborated with him. And so, you know, you get close to somebody, he tells you a lot of stories and he told me what is one of my favorite stories. And it has become the most important story for me to, to, to relay when I'm talking about interpreting material. And the story goes like this. Um, one night, late at night, the phone rings and John Milius answers and it's Stanley Kubrick calling him. And he says, I'm Stanley Kubrick. Uh, I'm a film director, you know, know who I am. He's like, oh, of course I know who you are. <laughs> it's like, I'm happy to talk to him, blah, blah, blah. And he says, I'm calling because I understand that you're the gun expert in Hollywood. You're the military history expert and you, you, you know, guns and firearms and weapons. He's like, yes, yes, uh, I know everything. There's a blah, blah, blah. He actually he probably wouldn't say he knows everything, but John does. And, um, so Stanley says, okay, well, I, I'd like your help. I want to buy a handgun, firearm, for target shooting specifically. And I want the very best uh, you know, pistol ever made. And John said, well, that's a 1911 Colt 45 special. And um, that is a very difficult gun to find. And Kubrick said, well, and an expensive one. And Kubrick said, well, that's the gun I would like you to help me find. Listen, I have one requirement. Can you find me uh, th this Colt 45 unused, never fired? And Milius is like, I don't know. I'll, let me see what I can do. That's going to be tough. And he looks around and in Texas, he finds a, uh, you know, a gun collector who has this gun and he sells it. He's willing to sell it. And he calls up Kubrick and says, not only did I find the gun, not only has it never been fired, it's never been taken out of its box. It is a perfectly virgin you know, firearm. It is new, it's expensive. Kubrick doesn't care. Money goes from England to Texas and the gun goes from Texas to England. And a couple of months later, uh, Milius finds himself back on the phone with Kubrick and he asks him, how do you like the uh, the handgun? And Kubrick says, oh, I love it. I love it. I took off the mother of pearl handles and I replaced it with mahogany. I replaced all the screws and re-anodized the whole thing. I shaved a quarter of a millimeter off of the uh, the eye line and realigned the bead. I rebored the barrel. I switched out the trigger. I did this, I did that. And Milius is like, oh, what have you done? You've ruined it. And Kubrick says, no, I made it better. <laughs> and that, is how you have to approach adapting material. You have to be willing to take this thing that is perfect, this thing that is just virgin, and you have to be willing to completely disassemble it and to recreate it into something new for your purposes. Fortunately, you're not destroying a 1911 uh, 45 special you know, for, uh, for whatever reasons you have, but um, you know, because the book will always exist. The rules of attraction in its pure form as a novel, you know, will exist as a companion to my movie and to whatever movie is ever made about the rules of attraction in years, many years to come. And so, um, uh, so my perspective is when approaching material, like you, you can be too slavish to material. You can be too, um, precious with it. I think this is like one of the problems with those Harry Potter movies. They're so afraid of like offending someone. Oh, their table was square in the book, not round. <laughs> you know, it's like, how could it be a square table? How come it, it's fucking Hollywood? You know, it's like, look, <laughs> I mean, it's a petty uh, thing to think about, but you know, you have to be willing to take it apart. 